Well, Ed, here we are, part three. So we've been generating certificates uh, of various kinds so far. We've been inspecting them with OpenSSL. What are we going to do in this part? Okay, great. So we are going to step away from the certificate and keys that we've just generated. We'll come back and use those later on. Uh, but what we're going to do next is actually a very common uh, troubleshooting scenario. Um, often, as an engineer, if you're working with SSL, you'll end up with a bunch of files that are all certificate files, and then a bunch of ambiguously named private key files, which are private key files, which match to the certificate files. But there isn't, it isn't like they're named the same or whatever the case. So you have to kind of figure out which of these certificates links or matches which of these keys. And so we have a little exercise where we're going to step through how you would do that, how you would solve that together. And this is a follow along exercise. So if you are following along, go ahead and download the files. There'll be a link in the description. There's both a zip file and a tar.gz file. They're, the contents of either file are identical. So download whichever, whichever makes the most sense is easier for you to work with. Uh, but at the end of the day, you should have these eight files in the directory once you've unzipped the files that you downloaded from the description. And I've got mine on my site, Ed. I'm ready to go. Awesome. Let's do it. So here's what we have. So as I mentioned, we have these three certificate files and these three private key files. Now we're gonna look at the, the NED certain key in the second part of part three. So uh, we'll get to that later. For now, I just wanna focus on these three certificates, Drew, Ethan, and Greg, and these three private key. Now you might recognize these names. These are the, the hosts of the Packet Pushers podcast. Uh, and we're gonna use them as a namesake for these certificates and keys. At least some of them, yeah. Uh, yeah. Drew, Ethan, Greg, and Ned. We're, we're some of the many hosts in the constellation <laughs> that is the Packet Pushers Podcast Network. Absolutely. Absolutely. So as I mentioned, a very common scenario you find yourself with is you have a bunch of certificates and then a bunch of keys. And if we look at the keys, they look like any of the keys that we've been playing around with so far, right? It's just a bunch, a huge blob of Base64 encoded text all of them different, but nothing really obviously identifying what key belongs to what certificate. Even if you look inside the key itself, OpenSL RSA dash in uh, priv key, let's just look at the third one. Uh, and this command is the same command we used in part one to inspect RSA private key files. It's pulled directly from this OpenSL cheat sheet. Cool, right there. So this is the command we just used to inspect an RSA private key file. So if I hit enter here, you'll see that inside this private key file, or again, the same values we looked at in part one, where we looked at the contents of an RSA private key file, but you'll notice there's, there's nothing identifying. There's not like an indication of like, this is for this particular website or belongs to this particular cert. Um, and you'll see that be the same for any of the private key files that we have. So this is why you end up with this kind of tricky situation of how do you link a particular private key file to a particular certificate? Well, if you look at the content of one of those certificates using the X509 inspection utility, uh, we'll look at Drew's certificate first. Oops, I'll spell text correctly. So here's the command that I ran. And you'll see Drew's certificate indicates that Drew owns Drew.com. Awesome. And then inside the certificate is a public key. Now, the public key value also exists in the private key. Now remember, we, we looked at this in part one, where when you generate a private key, you're actually generating both a public and private key. And then when you create a certificate, you're inserting the public portion of that into the certificate. And so that's what you see here, is the public portion of whatever key was used for drew.com exists in the certificate. And that's the value we're going to try and match on those private key files. Now, specifically, the value we want to match is the modulus value. If I scroll back up, you'll see that this private key, private key two, also had a modulus value. So I could use the same commands we've already used, where we looked at the where we looked at the entire contents of both the certificate and the uh, RSA key to match the modulus value, or I could use this nifty command in the OpenSSL cheat sheet that'll show you how to see if a particular RSA key matches a certificate. Oh, I was hoping for nifty because I was looking at these very long hex strings going, yeah, I don't want to type all that in. It better be, yeah, I don't even want to copy paste. There's got to be a better way. And you're about to show me a better way. A slightly better. It's still going to involve a long hex string, but it'll just be one of them. Uh, and you'll see it. It's going to be better than this. And, and we can get clever and pipe it to a hashing algorithm if we want to, but uh, we'll get there one step at a time. So let's do this. So here we'll start with Drew just because that's the one we've been using. 
I would use REQ if I was trying to match a CSR to a key. We don't have a CSR at this point, but notice that the command structure is largely the same. We do have certificates. So I'm gonna use the second line over here. In fact, let me show you. So this is the command we used before to look at everything inside the drew.com certificate. All we're doing to this command is instead of asking for the text output, we're just asking for the modulus. That's gonna give us just that portion, just that field in that certificate. Mm -hmm. And this is the field that we're gonna try and match against the private key files. So if we look at this guy right here, we can look at the last four digits, B1, B5. We can see if we can find which one of these private keys has a modulus value that ends in B1, B5. Uh, and the command to look at RSA key is again, right, right there in the cheat sheet, open SSL, RSA in, we'll start with the first one, no out, modulus. If I enter, you'll see that this guy does not seem to have the same modulus of private key one. So that tells us that doesn't match. So we'll go over here, do the same thing with private key two. Again, different last four. So that one doesn't match. By deduction, you can probably guess that this one will, but just to be explicit about it, yeah. notice right in here, B1, B5 does match B1, B5. If you want to look at every piece of this, it would also match as well. So this tells us private key three dot pen matches drew.com dot cert. Tracking what we've done so far. Absolutely. And I'm already wondering if there's a way I can make this even faster. If I oh. can, uh, you know, can I, can I do dash in priv key star wildcarded or something like that and parse it through <laughs> grep? I don't know. Um, you could, you could pipe it to a hashing. So the other, the other way, and this is fun because when I do this in an actual class in a real class, there's always someone that's more familiar with Linux that like quickly, you know, put together a little <laughs> script that does this automatically. And I'm like, awesome. That's awesome. You're, you're beyond me in, in, in your Linux food, but. So what I did here was just to keep things simple. I renamed private key three to drew.com. So this, this makes more sense to me, right? So if someone were to give me certain keys like this, you know, I'll thank them very much because it, it makes my job a little bit easier for when I'm inserting these keys on a web server or a load balancer or whatever the case. Cool. So to what you were saying about speeding it up, let's use Ethan co coincidentally to speed it up. So. OpenSL X509 in Ethan, no out, uh, and modulus. So again, this is the value that we're gonna use, but if we don't wanna have to compare, you know, this huge massive value, what we can do is simplify that value by piping, piping it to a hashing algorithm. Now, a lot of people will get upset that I just use MD5. Uh, MD5 is considered less than secure these days, we'll say, but for something as simple as like comparing the output of two files, like you're, you're probably fine using MD5, keep it simple. Uh, for you purists out there, you know, we could totally have used SHA-256, SHA so we could have used SHA-256 as well, either way. Uh, and then from here, we would do the exact same thing on the two remaining private keys. So RSA in priv key two, no out, modulus and we'll pipe now, this guy and if we've got a match what's going to happen here is our hashing values are going to be the same right and you'll see that right oops if i actually give it the right key because that's private one that's the other one and there they are 4a yeah they are ae 4a at the end yep so this tells us private key one matches ethan cert and so just to keep things simple, we'll move this guy to ethan.com.key, which means we only have one left. And of course, by deduction, we can guess that it matches up to, to Greg. And just for kicks, we can verify that open SSL RSA in the remaining one, no out modulus, open SSL X509 in, oops, Greg is the last one. No out onto uh, us. And you'll see that those values match up. Therefore, we know private key two matches Greg. Greg.com dot key. Okay. Which brings us to the remaining two files in our directory. Real quick, any questions on anything we've done so far? Oh, looking good to me, Ed. Uh, this is this is clear. Um, 
keeping stuff named right is, uh, I guess, kind of on you as the administrator. So, I mean, am I, am I likely to run into this problem where you know, I got a bunch of keys and a bunch of certs that I got to match up? Or if I'm doing my, you know, have my thinking hat on when I'm creating this stuff, I'm going to name it in a way that I'm <clears throat> going to know, right? Right. Ho hopefully the latter. Yeah. But, but it is something you run into more, more often than you would like. Um, one of the one of the commands that you can use with OpenSL to generate a CSR without feeding in a private key will automatically generate a private key for you, but it'll name it something generic. Well, I think it does actually name yeah. it privekey dot dot pen. So you'll end up if people reuse that command a bunch with a bunch of keys that all look like private key something or other without any indication of, of who owns of what certificate it belongs to. Okay, so if we go back to what we did in part two, we generated two sets of certificates. In fact, uh, what did I call it? Here are the files that we generated in part, part one and two. Uh, we generated some RSA certificates, but we also generated some elliptic curve certificates by using an elliptic curve key in the certificate. If we take a look at the contents of med.serve, x509 in ned.cert text. You'll notice that ned.cert is a certificate that has a public key value, but the public key is not an RSA key. It's an elliptic curve key, just like we generated a moment ago. We notice in this public key, since it's an elliptic curve and not an RSA public key, it doesn't have a modulus value. So that same system that we use where we ask for the modulus to match to a particular private key wouldn't work. In fact, if I try and ask for it, OpenSL even tells me, it's like, hey, this is the wrong type of key. There isn't a modulus value in this key. It just doesn't exist. So it accepted the command, but I'm asking for the wrong thing. So this strategy, while nifty, works for RSA keys. But as we discussed earlier, more and more people are using elliptic curve keys as they should. So we need another strategy we can use to match an elliptic curve private key file to an elliptic curve certificate. Lucky for us, I've accounted for that. And that also exists in our OpenSL cheat sheet as well. The difference though, is instead of matching a particular value in the public key, like the modulus value, we're matching the entire public key. So the output to that, instead of asking for the modulus, and I'm using the second command in the sequence over here, I'm going to ask for the entire public key. That's going to spit out something that looks like this. Ideally, in the private key that matches this certificate, the public key is also going to look like this. Now, I can't just do, let me see the private key, right? Because this private key file includes both the private and public values. And obviously, this doesn't match this over here, right? But we can deduce right. by file name that, that these are associated to one another. So what I want to do is take from this elliptic curve key just the public value. And that's what this third command is doing in this section of the uh, cheat sheet. Scroll it down just a bit so it's all in view. Cool. So the command is open as cell, EC, I'll feed in ned.key, and I'll ask for the public output. And that's going to give me something that looks like this. And you'll notice that it matches what we had over here, you know, bit for bit. And again, we can do the same, we'll call it a trick that we did before, where I pipe the output of that to a particular hashing algorithm to simplify what I'm comparing. And if I were going to skip script something out, I would definitely do this to keep things simple, but you'll notice both of them match. Therefore, I can be assured that this key does indeed match this certificate. Got it. Got it. Very straightforward. Yeah. Cool. Now, the last piece of this that I'll mention is this section used OpenSSL EC, which would work for elliptic curve keys. And we'll show that right over here. But obviously, wouldn't work for, uh, you know, drew.com dot dash key. Wouldn't work for an RSA key. In the same way, OpenSSL RSA would work um, would work for an RSA key, but RSA wouldn't work for an elliptic curve key. 
Uh, yeah, I, I had missed that for a second because it's like, well, wait a minute, there's a public key in there. Why wouldn't it work? Oh, because the keyword EC versus RSA in right. front of the command. You've exactly. got to tell OpenSSL what sort of input it's about to get. Exactly. So OpenSSL only only knows to work with RSA keys and OpenSSL EC only knows to work with EC keys. Um, they did, I don't remember what version, I think OpenSSL version 1.1, if I recall. They added a new OpenSSL utility. So you don't actually see this used very often, but the pkey utility. And this is meant to be a generic private key inspection utility that can actually read in both. So I can do dash in nid dash key, and we can use uh, no out dash text. You'll see it worked to inspect an elliptic curve keys, and it'll also work to inspect a RSA key. The difference though, and actually I have the input for that guy right in here. So this is also included in the cheat sheet. So if you download this guy, you'll have access to those commands as well. Make this guy a little bit bigger. Uh, so you'll have a section of, of how to use the PK utility as well. The difference though, is that the PK utility, since it's inspecting all keys, it doesn't have the modulus argument to extract just the modulus because the modulus only applies to RSA keys. More functionality in some ways that you can use it for all keys, less functionality in others that you can do less on specific keys. Everything's a trade-off, right? But you can, of course, do the, uh, and this is the, the third option over here. You can use the P key utility to extract the public key in PEM format. The argument for that is dash pub out. So I could easily have done dash pub out to compare Drew's key with OpenSL, P, X509, oh my gosh, with the certificate for Drew, X509 in Drew.com.cert. And I believe the output, you know, it's to output just the, uh, the public key, the argument is a little bit different if I recall. Let's see if I can find it. Oh, pub key, it's down here. And here's the public portion, and you'll see that it matches the uh, public portion that I extracted earlier of the uh, drew.com key. So if I were going to script something out, like create a script to automatically test if two, a certificate or key file matches, I would definitely use the PK utility because you can use one script for all types of keys. Uh, yeah, and so this was part three of this, and here are all the commands we did in part three, all in the OpenSL cheat sheet. Any questions on uh, part three? No questions from me, Ed. Uh, this was all this is all straightforward enough. And what's interesting as we've gone through these different parts, the command structure becomes increasingly familiar. So once you get used to what this switch does or how to modify the output in that way, it becomes easier to just to work with and manipulate these certificate and key files. Yeah, absolutely. Almost too familiar that that it throws you off when they're used pub key in one of them and pub out in the other one. Of course, yeah. <laughs> 